This is a very important video for me. Please watch it until the end, give it a like and share it on social media if you can. Thank you very much for watching. August 9, 2020, Belarus was preparing for an election. Independent polls show that the sitting president, Alexander Lukashenko, only had support by 3% of the Belarusians. However, Lukashenko was so confident in another victory that he called in the military, fenced off all government buildings, deported all foreign media and turned off most internet services. All signs of a stable and confident leader. She's only 37 and she's not a politician. The exit polls soon showed that Svetlana Tikhanovskaya Sveta had a crushing lead over Lukashenko, but the president had a clever plan to change the election results to his favor. Here's a lady climbing out of a window from a polling station. A police officer is holding the ladder for her, so that she can safely escape carrying the votes with her. Another bag is lowered down through the window. What happened to the bags later? We can't be sure, but here are photos of burned voting ballots and you can make up your own minds. When all the votes were counted, a winner was declared. Lukashenko, according to results in the closed polling stations in five regions, received 82.08 percent. Does anyone in Belarus believe the result? Lukashenko ruthlessly responded to protests with brutal violence by riot police and special forces. Before we continue with the protests, let's take a look at the man they call the moustached cockroach. Lukashenko, the last dictator of Europe. Lukashenko, here seen offering a carrot to Steven Seagal. Has all the qualities of a dictator. After he first came to power, he removed the term limit for how long you can sit as president. He took control of the National Bank. Even before this election, opposition leaders suddenly disappeared. A Belarus government death squad was responsible for the disappearance of three opposition leaders 20 years ago. Every autumn, a vigil is held in Minsk in honor of Yuri Zakharenko and the other opposition politicians who disappeared. And any protests were crushed with military force. He doesn't believe that the coronavirus is dangerous. He first recommended his citizens to drink more vodka and visit saunas more often. He also seems to think that, since you can't see the virus, 
he doesn't even exist. Instead of avoiding big crowds, Lukashenko pushed for celebrating Victory Day, as usual. According to Lukashenko, COVID-19 is not a disease at all, it's probably just psychosis. People finally had enough. Several opposition media outlets appeared, among them Belarusian language Belsat channel, operating from Poland, as well as YouTube and Telegram channel Nexta, whose founder was forced to flee to Warsaw. Sergei Tichanowski also decided to do something about the situation in Belarus and started a YouTube channel called Country for Life, translated from Russian. He showcased the decaying state of Belarus, beyond the shiny palaces and presidential residences. In contrast, here is Lukashenko waltzing around with a beauty queen. January 29, 2020, the president is expected to visit Dobrush soon, so the mayor orders everyone to create a nice facade to please the president. Front side of buildings needs to be painted, curbs needs to be fixed, and even if it is in the middle of the winter, the grass needs to be mowed. This is what it looks like on the other side, a telling example of the shallowness of the dictator. Even though Tikhanovsky managed to get an impressive following, he was mostly ignored by the government. That was until he announced he was running for president. Я Сергей Тихановский, белорусский предприниматель и блогер, заявляю о своем намерении участвовать в президентской кампании в качестве кандидата в президенты. An amateur video shows how Tikhanovsky is being arrested on the charge of calling the president a cockroach. This gave birth to a new internet meme. Stop the cockroach. Here is where the government may have made their biggest mistake yet. The law states that you need to gather a certain number of signatures if you want to run for office. And since the government showed no interest in releasing him in time to gather the signatures, his wife, Svetlana, took his place and continued to gather signatures so that she could run in his stead. The government, now completely focused on Sergei, continued to harass him. During a support rally for Svetlana, this unidentified woman is trying to provoke him several times, hoping to get him to be violent. When that doesn't work as planned, police shows up. Their new plan is to try and charge him with violence against police officers. Here we can see that Sergei apparently has magical powers and force a police officer to the ground without even touching him. A planted cameraman makes sure to film the wounded officer lying helpless on the ground. Well played. The guy who showed Gerard Depardieu how to ride a tractor continued to attack his opponents, either by denying them from registering as a candidate or as in the case of Viktor Babaruka, arresting him and taking control of his bank. It's quite telling that Lukashenko didn't think anyone would vote for a woman, since the only three remaining opposition candidates were women. Привет, Minsk! These are actual Lukashenko quotes. People are not ready to vote for a woman. And our constitution is not suitable for a woman. 
2006 году даже два раза говорили о том, что вам пришлось фальсифицировать в другую сторону результаты Был... выборов, чтобы Евро... ЕС так не реагировал Когда на цифру меня за достали. Лукашенко himself has admitted to falsifying election results in the past on more than one occasion on national television. С тем, что я там фальсифицировал выборы и в результате этого победил. Да, мы, мы последние выборы фальсифицировали. Я уже западникам это говорил. За президента Лукашенко проголосовало, проголосовало 93,5%. 93,5%. Но говорят, это не европейский показатель. Я отдал команду, чтобы не 93% было, а было там где-то 80, я не помню сколько. Потому что за 90 это уже психологически не воспринимается. No one was surprised that Lukashenko yet again was presented as the official winner of the election, but the people took to the streets. Chants of change and long live Belarus resounding through the city. The police and the special forces responded with shock grenades, tear gas and extreme violence. There are countless stories from victims of extreme police brutality. At more than one occurrence, people have died as the result of brutal actions from the police. The rightful winner of the election, Svetlana, was forced to flee the country. On a message she uploaded to YouTube, she urged the people of Belarus to keep on protesting peacefully and urged the government to stop the violence. The protests are still going on, and they do it with a white, red and white flag that has occasionally been used as the official Belarusian flag. The current official red and green flag is closely related to the days of the Soviet Union and was brought back by Lukashenko. Now, the white, red, white flag stands as a symbol of liberation and democracy, and it unites the people against the government. The government, however, says they are preparing a new law that will forbid the use of the flag, since they say it is a symbol for Nazism. The protests even reached my city of Stockholm. I joined one of the rallies and I managed to speak to a few of the protesters before their group grew bigger. Uh, we are protesting today against violence in Belarus and um, all we want to do is to for people's voices to be heard and for people's opinion to be taken into account. They are being careful to note that they want a peaceful transfer of power. I suggest a more powerful chant. I, I think I remember one. It's uh, Lukashenko Vaftasak. <laughs> <laughs> but they just laugh it off. We're normally shouting out this one. It's uh, Je vais Belarus. Long live Belarus. Belarus, yes. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. What was that? Belarus still alive. Yes. We stood there, sang a few songs, waved our white, red, white flags, and thinking about our friends, not far away from us, that were still fighting for their freedom. Belarusian people, I think we yes. talk about Good. it a lot. Yeah. The people the themselves are the biggest the heroes. Scale. Yes. It's the most his biggest hero mm. in Belarus, I yeah. think so. Yes. He did a lot in mm. To them, Svetlana is a hero, and across Europe, she is greeted and treated as an official Belarusian representative. Here are pictures of her and the Swedish Prime Minister in November of 2020. And here she is in discussions with the Swedish Secretary of State. The story is far from over. And the protests are still going on. I promise to revisit this subject and I am officially taking a stand for the people of Belarus against the dictator Alexander Lukashenko. Stop.
the cockroach. Yeah, 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 yeah.